we're excited to be talking about pancreatic cancer and to be talking about the University of Michigan approach to treating pancreatic cancer, diagnosing it. Um, pancreatic cancer is the fourth uh, leading cause of, of cancer death in the United States um, among both men and women. Um, the incidence of pancreatic cancer has been increasing in the United States since 1999, as has death um, from pancreatic cancer. Um, we estimate that there'll be about 46,000 cases of pancreatic cancer in the United States this year and about 39,000 deaths. So almost everybody that gets the disease dies from it. It's a pretty dismal uh, outcome from the disease. Um, one of the things that has been known for a long time about epidemiology and pancreatic cancer is that smoking is a risk factor. When you look um, across multiple studies, the attributable risk from tobacco use in terms of how much of death is related to smoking in pancreatic cancer, it's at least 20% of cases. And research that we've done here um, uh, in cooperation with the University of Pittsburgh initially um, showed that uh, there was a earlier onset of pancreatic cancer in smokers and in drinkers as well and that the combined risk between uh, smoking and drinking was additive, such that when patients drank and smoke both, that the age of onset was 10 years younger. So dramatic decrease in the age of onset for pancreatic cancer if you were a drinker and smoker. Um, but if you stopped drinking and smoking, uh, the risk decreased after about 10 years. So some good news if patients stopped drinking and smoking. So some hope there. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably also important to mention the link between diabetes and pancreatic cancer. I don't know if you're going to mention that, Michelle. Um, but it's a kind of an interesting um, link in that uh, we know that there's something that happens when people get pancreatic cancer that they often present with diabetes. Even up to two-thirds of patients will develop uh, diabetes and then later, um, often several months later, present with the symptoms and signs of pancreatic cancer. But we now also know that patients who have long-standing type 2 diabetes are at increased risk for pancreatic cancer. And that may be one of the causative factors for the uh, increase in pancreatic cancer that we're seeing in the population. One of the other risk factors that uh, has become known through research is, is familial risk factors. And uh, patients that have multiple family members with pancreatic cancer seem to be at an increased risk for pancreatic cancer, there's genetic um, influences, and that's something that is undergoing a lot of research right now. And I know um, genetic research is something that's a really hot topic and something that you're looking at. Uh, sure. Andy, do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, so we know that pancreas cancer runs in certain families, um, and that suggests that there are genes or mutations that are handed down from generation to generation that confer this risk. And so we're just now gaining a handle on what those mutations, what those changes are, so that we can come up with better tests to figure out whether siblings from that family or, or, or kids from those families will be at risk down the road. And so we're, we're at the, we at the University of Michigan are developing multiple different testing strategies to try to evaluate risk in patients um, in whom pancreas cancer runs in the family. Are you using blood? What kind of substances are you looking at? Yeah, so we're using a mul multiple different platforms to try to see whether or not we can find these needles in a haystack. Uh, we're, we're looking at peripheral blood, um, blood from, from your arm. We're also looking at biopsy specimens from endoscopic ultrasound, which Dr. Anderson can talk more about. Uh, we're also looking at um, different constituents within the bloodstream. Uh, that may that may tip us off as to whether or not risk is involved in these patients. I think an important point to make out is uh, to to bring out is not only is a family risk of other members of pancreas cancer, but other cancers can be associated with pancreatic cancer, and it's important for people to understand that some families with breast cancer can be at increased risk for pancreatic cancer. Some families with colon cancer, melanoma, those are some of the other cancers that can be red flags to have a link. Um, to pancreatic cancer. And one of the um, things that we've really focused on in our multidisciplinary clinic is to embed uh, a genetics counseling team 
for all the patients that we see in clinic, which I really do think should be the state of the art in the evaluation of a patient where we get a detailed family history to make sure that if there is any risk uh, that's genetic in nature that those patients will go a comprehensive evaluation and their family members will be counseled.